Do you remember what you wanted to be when you were a kid? When I was seven, I remember and announced with a lot of pride to my favorite teacher that I wanted to be a nun. She rolled her high, broke my heart. When I was 13, I was fascinated with wildlife. My heroes were Jane Goodall, Diane Fosse. I must say I was bullied at school, so I was kind of upset with these stupid human beings. And yes, that'd be the plan. I'll fly to Rwanda or Kenya. I'll be a vet. And I spend my entire life protecting gorillas, lions, and their habitats. Today, I'm working in the AI industry. And I am a big AI enthusiast, AI for good enthusiast. How did that happen? I'm going to take you on a little journey from my teenage aspiration to today's exciting perspective. Growing up, I eventually reconciled myself with Yomo Sapatsk, but I was still very disturbed by your capacity to destroy your planet and practice unfair treatments, racism, sexism, homophobia. So I will be a lawyer, I will work in the United Nations, and I will defend human rights and environmental rights. But in the end, I didn't become a vet. I didn't become a lawyer. No, not obviously. I started to work in the tech industry. Why? I had such big ideals, but I was undeniably attracted to this industry of doers, fearless entrepreneurs that were changing our habits in decades. Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, wow. Maybe we could leverage tech to do something good in the world. So I've started my career in software companies. These were super exciting time. Facebook was exploding, it was the beginning of the Internet of Things. But yet, I couldn't reconcile impact and tech. So I was about to move to another industry when I got the chance to start working in an AI startup. And I was blown away by the power of this technology. So what is artificial intelligence? Three notions to have in mind. One. AI is a branch of computer science that enables machines to perform tasks that usually require human intelligence, recognizing images, understanding language, solving problems, make decisions. Two, machine learning. Machine learning is one approach to reach artificial intelligence through algorithms that analyze data, learn from them, find patterns, or make predictions about something in the world. Number three. Deep learning, or deep neural learning, is one of the latest techniques to implement machine learning using algorithms designed like our human brain that can process an infinite number of data in such a short time. AI is so powerful, it can solve problems and find solutions where we, human beings, will never be able to find on our own. Think about AlphaFold. AlphaFold is a deep learning program developed by DeepMind in 2020. And basically, they're solving one of the biggest challenges in biology, predicting the shape of protein. Did you know that each protein has a unique shape that determines its functions? There are literally billions of proteins in, human li in living things and an infinite number of configurations possible. AlphaFold is able to predict the shape of a protein with the same level of accuracy than, no, than lab in a few days versus a few years with conventional methods, opening the door to new treatment for diseases and to new synthetic protein able to digest waste, produce biofuel, or make our plants more nutritious. While I was discovering the fabulous world of AI, the United Nations were announcing that we were falling behind with regard to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals in 2030. The SDGs are 17 goals adopted by the United Nations in 2015 as a universal call to protect our planet and poverty and make sure people live in peace and prosperity by 2030. That was it. I could finally reconcile tech and impact 
convinced that we could leverage AI to accelerate progress toward the SDGs. I was so excited that I've decided to turn it into my dream job, spotting and helping entrepreneurs, researchers, scientists that are using AI to help deliver on the sustainable development goals. That's why today I want to share with you two areas that resonate with my teenage questioning, but also my current concerns, and where AI can help tremendously. Climate change and equity and human rights. I will show you through pragmatic example how we are more informed and more empowered thanks to AI to make the right decision and make our world a better place. Let's start with climate change. AI can help us with the energy transition but also with our biggest natural ally, forest. Did you know that more than 70% of our carbon emissions are coming from the energy sector? That's why we are decarbonizing it, and to do so, we're shifting toward renewable energy, solar, wind. This transition is coming with very complex challenges. Fortunately, electric systems are aware of data, so AI can help substantially. For instance, to produce renewable energy, you depend on solar and wind conditions. So operators have to work with standby polluting plants to avoid shortages, which means that basically, depending on the time you're using energy during the day, you may be using dirty energy. By using machine learning to better forecast how much power is generated by renewable sources and how much power demand there is, we are able to reduce dra dramatically the reliance on the standby polluting plants. For instance, the tech nonprofit What Time is developing a solution named Automated Emissions Reduction. Basically, what they do is that they forecast the grid emission intensity in your region, then they connect with your smart device, smart fridge, smart car, to help them adapt the timing of the use of energy to synchronize with clean energy and avoid dirty energy. Potentially, we're talking about a 40% reduction of carbon emission in the coming years with this technology. Greenhouse emissions are not only coming from power plants. They're also coming from the massive destruction of forests. Forests that do capture carbon through photosynthesis. Here again, AI can help a lot. It can help to plan reforestation, and to monitor restoration program. So to plan reforestation, you need to know where to plant the trees. The Krauser Lab from ETH Zurich University carried out a study in 2019 to assess how many trees the world could support, where they should be grown up, and how much carbon they could capture. They've been using AI to analyze 80,000 images from satellites combined with variables such as topography, soil quality, climate, all over the globe. They came up with the three next results. One, in the map A, you can see the global tree cover, which is basically the number of trees the world can support. This equal to 4.4 billion hectares. On map B, you can see the global tree potential cover available for reforestation, which is 1 billion hectares. Basically, it's the 4.4 billion hectares minus current for forest minus agriculture areas. The studies is telling us that this 1 billion uh, hectare equal 1 trillion tree, and that this trillion tree is able to capture 200 gigatons of carbon emissions, which equals to 100 years of carbon emissions. The third result is also super interesting. Half of these trillion trees are located in the northern hemisphere, meaning that some of the richest countries in the world, USA, Canada, Russia, Europe, China, hold the power to reduce our carbon emission by half. Going further, AI can help us with restoration program. This is what the company Pachama is doing. They're using deep learning combined with images from satellites and drones to assess from the shape of the forests, the level of carbon capture and the level of biodiversity and wildlife. 
Let's take an example here in Brazil. And on the left, you can see the monitoring work of Pachama. And here they're assessing the level of carbon capture from the project through the years compared to the region. This kind of tool is super important because today only 2% of the funding coming from the credit carbon markets are going to restoration program. So the more assessment tools we have, the more clarity and transparency we'll have, and potentially, hopefully, we'll be able to drive more funding to these restoration projects. Now, another area that is really dear to my heart is how we can fight against unfair treatment, racism, homophobia, sexism. How can we fight Again, this bias, racial bias, gender bias, that follow us from very old time and that are like kind of hardwired in our brain. It's interesting because we've never been so talkative and aware of this bias these days, though they're supposed to be unconscious. Because we're so afraid to see them perpetrated in our AI systems. Let's come back on the mechanism. To do machine learning, you need data and you need algorithm. The algorithm is the logic applied to the data. So basically, we are transferring our bias, consciously or unconsciously, through data sets and through algorithms. So indeed, we are at risk that AI may reproduce, amplify, and automate our bias. That can be frightening, right? Think about the former recruiting algorithm of Amazon that was biased against women. Think about the sentencing algorithm in the US that were clearly biased against black people. The good news is that we are aware of this and that the AI community is working to reduce it. I will even say that one of the most interesting and efficient solutions to reduce this bias lies in AI itself. Because with AI, we can work at building fair algorithms that will take over on our unfair decision makings. And second, we can use AI to reveal and predict our level of fairness so we can act upon it. That's pretty interesting because if we rely on mentality to change, it's gonna take centuries. The World Economic Forum is telling us that it will take 130 years to close the global gender gap. I don't know about you, but I wanna see that in my lifetime. And I really think we can hack mentalities for good with AI. So how do we do this? How do we build fair AI? Three answers here. One, we need diversity in engineering teams that are building algorithms. Today, it's always the same kind of population, young, white, male. We need more ethnic diversity. We need more gender diversity within engineers so they are able to identify very early in the process bias that may be deployed in their work. Second, we need to systematically use bias auditing tools. There are plenty of them on the market. Basically, it's like when you release a car, you check that it's safe. Let's do the same with algorithm. Number three, we need to make sure we have enough data about underrepresented population in data sets. In other words, we need to be careful when we use historical data because this is where the bias are hidden. Let's take Amazon again. Their algorithm was basically uh, doing what it was supposed to do. Learn from 10 years of recruitment at Amazon, find a pattern, and make a recommendation on this. Of course, those 10 years of recruitment were a majority of men. So obviously, <laughs> the algorithm will favor men. Now, if you train this algorithm with performance data rather than historical data, you may be able to reduce the risk. This is what the company Pymetrics is doing. They're developing a talent matching platform and they use AI to assess the soft skill of candidates. They will assess the level of generosity, fairness, empathy, and they will do the same job with employees from the company that is recruiting, and then they will compare the score. The candidates whose skills are the closest to the most performing employees will move forward in the process. Another way to answer is how can we use AI to reveal and predict our level of fairness so we can act upon it. I'm gonna take here two examples in the justice system. 
The Stanford Computational Policy Lab is helping prosecutors in San Francisco to make race-blind charging decisions on incoming felony cases. What does that mean? Basically, they train an algorithm to identify race-related information within policy, poli policing electronic records and to remove them. So basically, in the example you see, the algorithm has identified and removed the name of the victim, indi indication related to the hair color, skin color, or neighborhood. Now, last example, and this is one of my favorite. We can use AI to assess the fairness of trials. TrialWatch is an AI-powered platform developed by Microsoft and the Clooney Foundation, whose mission is to build assessment tools for fairness in trial and protect vulnerable, vulnerable groups such as LGBT, women, political opponents, or journalists whose rights are at risk to be violated during the justice process. So on this platform, they're gathering data from trials all around the world. The AI will transform the record into text, translate in different languages, and make it comparable so it can identify pattern, assess the trials, and grade the fairness. This tool is essential because basically it enables us to denounce publicly and in right time any injustice, making the world kind of a witness into the courtrooms. So you see, there are a lot of different ways to do AI for good. Within our, AI, within our community, we have more than 200 projects, but every day we're meeting new entrepreneurs, new projects, new brilliant ideas. AI can be used to speed up drug discovery, fight against COVID, cancer, malaria. AI can be used to promote a more sustainable agriculture. AI can be used to fight against misinformation or terrorism. Of course, AI is no silver bullet. We need regulation. We need political incentive so it's used responsibly and to encourage the use of it for good. But from what I've been witnessing in the last year, we're going in the right direction. And we are more and more informed and empowered thanks to AI to make the best decision and solve some of the biggest challenges we face as a civilization and a planet. And when my kid will start to wonder what they want to do when they're older. I would have hundreds of heroes, role models, entrepreneurs, researchers, scientists, activists, and I will tell them their story. And I hope they will be inspired and convinced they can change the world for good thanks to artificial intelligence. To all of you, students, people working in AI from near or far, up to you to act now. I choose AI for good. What will you do? Thank you.